Hey everybody, so I have here on me the Meiju Zero. This is the concept device for Meiju. Meiju is calling it the world's first holeless phone. So by that they mean this phone has no buttons, no speaker grills, no charging ports, and not even a SIM card slot, like no nothing. So if you follow my YouTube channel, you know that I actually made a video on this phone already about a week and a half ago. But that video was very rushed because the phone got to me like right before Chinese New Year hit. So I felt like I wanted to make a video and just pump it out right away. But now in hindsight, after using this phone for like a week and a half, I, I figured that video didn't really do it justice because there's actually a lot of good to this phone even though it's not practical at all. So I figured I'm gonna make a new video right here to talk about this phone. And uh, if you've already seen that video, then a lot of what I say here will be repeats except I'll have more in-depth details about battery life and photo sample all that so you can consider this video like a remix so first let's talk about all the stuff that's missing from this phone and what Meiju is doing to kind of compensate for it so there is no charging port that's pretty obvious so this phone can only be charged wirelessly now you can use any Qi compatible wireless charger to charge the zero but Meiju actually packages with this phone a wireless charging base that can fast charge the device up to 15 watts so that's pretty fast for wireless charging but still not that fast um, compared to cable charging in my testing I can top up this phone from 0 to 100 in about like an hour and a half now there is no speaker grill whatsoever on this phone so instead Sam will pump out through the screen via vibrations that's a piezoelectric technology the same tech that Xiaomi used in the first Mi Mix so that means when you play videos or music or whatever sound will come through through the screen and the screen will actually vibrate and um to be honest it actually sounds pretty good as long as you're in a quiet environment like if i'm at a quiet coffee shop or at home it sounds fine but when you're using it in public like in front of other people it, you're not going to be able to hear it because the overall volume is not that loud but you don't want to be the type of people that blast music through the loudspeaker in public anyway so it kind of doesn't matter you can just use bluetooth earphones out in the public now the major zero has no buttons and by buttons i mean no physical clicky buttons instead in its place are these touch pressure sensitive panels that when you press into them it simulates the effects of a button there's a tactile engine in there that will actually vibrate when you press into it to sim simulate like like a clicky feeling now if you used an iPhone 7 or 8, you know how that feels like. That's basically the home buttons in iPhone 7 and 8 because those buttons are also like a fake button. It's when you press into it, there's a haptic engine underneath that rumbles. So it's the same feeling here. And for the most part, it works just fine if you know where to press. So that's a major issue, which I'll get into later because basically when using this phone out and about, it's just very hard to find the buttons. Now finally, the Meiju Zero has no SIM card slot. So this phone uses eSIM technology. If you're not familiar with eSIM technology, it's a very niche tech that's not widely adopted yet. It basically, instead of using a physical SIM card, it will use a software embedded SIM in there that you have to get through your carrier and then you'll be able to get cell reception and phone calls through that. Now that sounds cool in theory, but it's problematic because one, most carriers right now just don't carry eSIM yet. And even if it does, it's a hassle to set up because you have to go to a carrier and they have to do it for you. So you can't swap SIM cards easily if you want. And that means also if you say, if you lose this phone and you buy a new phone, you can't just put a new SIM card in there and have that phone working right away. You have to go to your carrier or maybe call them and let them do it for you. And that will probably take at least a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days. Now this radical design obviously brings some good and bad the good is that the major zero is probably the best feeling phone i've ever held like the, mo the most premium feeling phone the fact that there's no buttons no charging ports no openings gives the zero an extra dense feeling like it really feels like it's like one solid piece like i can grip onto it really tight like press into it and none no part of the phone will move or give it feels very solid very well built it helps that makes you use ceramic for the material and ceramic is just denser feels better than glass now by comparison even something like an lg v40 this is a premium feeling phone but if you press hard enough in the area of the charging port you can feel that it's a little bit hollow right here but means there's a hole right here and when you run your fingers through the sides you actually feel the buttons that stick out 
but on the Meiji Zero, I can run the phone like this completely and it feels completely smooth, other than the slight camera bump right here. But at the same time, the Meiji Zero is not the easiest phone to use because you cannot find the volume buttons or even the power button by touch. That means the first couple of days you use this phone, it's going to be quite difficult for you to adjust the volume. You're probably going to have to look at the phone before you can increase or decrease volume or have to like press a couple of times to be able to power on or off the phone. But you will get used to it. I've used this phone for over a week now and uh, it's become second nature to me now. So now when I'm listening to music, I know instinctively to press down here to decrease volume or increase volume. When I want to sleep the phone, I know that to press here. So you will get used to it eventually. It just takes a little bit of time. So let's talk about the display panel really quick. This six inch OLED panel is absolutely gorgeous. Meiju has dialed up, pumped up the contrast to the max. So when you're looking at things like Instagram or just photos of scenery of bold colors, it just looks very, very lively. It pops off the screen. Now I gotta say the colors aren't quite accurate. Look at the table here. Through the phone screen, the blue looks so punchy, right? But then now you look at the table in real life, it's actually, the blues are more muted. It's not as like bold. If you're a color purist, if you're a graphic designer, you might find that the colors to be a little bit unrealistic. But me personally, I love it. Like there are a lot of times I'll be using this phone side by side with an iPhone, which has a more natural display. And I'll be going on Instagram, looking at the same photos and I'll be like, damn, the photo looks so much nicer on the Meiji Zero than it does on the iPhone XS Max. So now the rest of the specs are a bit of a mixed bag. The chipset inside is a Snapdragon 845 with six gigs of RAM. So I don't even need to say it, that's old. Snapdragon 855 is coming in like a couple of weeks and we have phones now like eight or 10 gigs of RAM. Now in Meiju's defense, Snapdragon 845 with six gigs of RAM is still more than powerful enough for like 99% of the people out there. And throughout my use, I didn't really encounter any issues. I played games took photos, watched videos, everything ran fine. But still, you're releasing a phone in 2019 with a chipset that's a year old, you have to dock a little bit of points for it. So now moving on to the camera. So the camera setup here, it's a 12 megapixel main shooter, Sony IMX sensor with a 1.55 micron pixel size and an f1.8 aperture. Second lens, it's a 20 megapixel telephoto lens that can do three times lossless zoom. So if you are familiar with Meiju products, you know this is the exact same camera hardware as on the Meiju 16th, which was uh, the company's last flagship. And uh, that camera is overall very strong. So I'll show you some photo samples right now. So overall, I would say photo samples, you know, if you're taking pictures during the day, it's gonna come out absolutely sharp, absolutely vibrant. Shutter speed is fast. It focuses very fast too. And bokeh effect also looks pretty natural. Like the edge detection is on point, not much complaints. Now the three times loss of zoom, I'm not quite sure it's actually lossless as advertised as you can see here. I think actually you lose a little bit of details and it looks a little bit blurry at three times zoom, but it's a nice tool to have. The camera app, it's pretty well designed. It's pretty easy to use. You have the zoom button right here and then you can swipe left to right to move around the mode. In terms of video recording, you can shoot all the way up to 4K 30, but whether or not you're shooting at 4K 30 or 1080 30, there is no stabilization. So you see footage here, colors look sharp, dynamic range is good, but it's just a little bit jerky. There's no stabilization. But overall, you know, there's not much to complain about this camera system. It's above average, it's definitely serviceable. So day-to-day -day use, you're not gonna encounter any issues other than the stuff I already mentioned, such as the volume rockers being very hard to find, and the fact that the speaker coming through the screen is just not as loud as other phones. So if you're watching a video with other people talking around you, you might not be able to hear the video. All right, you know what we got to do? We got to do a video speaker test. I know in my last video, I said I'm going to do less of these K-pop videos because, because my girlfriend was getting annoyed with me. Well, too bad. I need something that I can show that looks good without getting copyright violations. So yeah, you see right now the sound's coming through a speaker. You see how um, it's not that loud? I'm going to just go to max volume. So this is max volume now. The screen looks great though. It, everything curves to the sides. So yeah, this is max volume. It, it doesn't get that loud at all. Let's we'll switch to another video. But at least the sound sounds pretty good. There's no distortion. 
even on max volume and the screen vibrates a little bit and the fact that it's playing through the screen means you can't accidentally muffle the speaker if you have your finger over like the edge of the phone you can cover it completely and you're still going to hear sound but overall the speaker just isn't that loud so now in terms of software this phone runs on Android 8.1, so I'm a little bit disappointed in that. But the good news is Meiji's software skin is pretty good. I, I don't love it as much as I love Oxygen OS, but I like it a lot better than Huawei's EMUI or Vivo's Fun Touch. There is no app tray, that sucks, but app icons look good. The aesthetic overall looks nice, and there's little useful touches such as you're able to swipe on the side of the screen to bring up apps really quickly. So when you swipe up and down, you see like a row of alphabetical orders and you have to do is move your finger to the middle and then let go and then it will launch that app. So I find this quite useful. And uh, the swiping navigations on this, as well as may use uh, M back, which is like a touch sensitive button that you press or tap to go back and forth. Overall, I quite like the software. Like I can deal with this. I don't need to put an Android skin on this phone like I do with Huawei or Oppo or Vivo devices. So now let's talk battery life. Meiji has been pretty secretive about the battery capacity in this. So I don't know if it's 3,500 or 3,700, but I can say battery life is good. It lasts an entire day. But to be fair, I haven't been able to use a SIM card in this phone because my carrier doesn't support eSIM. So that means I've only been using this phone through Wi-Fi. But with that said, I would start the day at like 10 or 11 a.m. And even at the end of the day at like 1 a.m., the phone would still have like 20 to 30% battery life left. So I think this is a phone that can last you all day. Chinese phones in general will be able to last you all day. I haven't seen any missing notifications, so everything works. The problem is you just need to make sure you have eSIM. If you don't have eSIM support, you're not able to use this phone out and about. So what I recommend to Meiji Zero, it's a tough call because like I said, this phone, it's not practical to use day to day. So it's very tough as a daily driver. But I think Meiji understands that because Meiji only made like a hundred of these phones. So Meiji is not trying to sell this to the masses. It's not a mainstream product. Instead, this is for collectors or tech geeks like me. So you buy this phone if you all have money to spend and you're a collector. You just want to buy something that looks nice, that offers a glimpse at the future that you just want to use at home or maybe you put it on a trophy case because this phone does look pretty damn nice or you buy the phone if you're like me someone who reviews phones for a living or you're a tech geek who just wants to get your hand on the latest phone because although i'm pretty sure a lot of mainstream consumers will make fun of this phone for having no ports no buttons no sim tray the reality is this is the future we know because apple actually considered removing the lightning port from the iphone 10 two years ago so we know that Apple is actually thinking in the heads they want to make something similar with no charging ports, you know, no holes, and probably no buttons. It's just that Apple knew the tech wasn't ready for the masses yet. So right now in 2019, the tech is a bit ahead of its time. But by 2021, by the time we're on the iPhone 12, Samsung Galaxy S13 or whatever, we might be using phones with no charging ports, no buttons, no SIM tray, no nothing. So that's it for now. This is the Major Zero. I'll have a lot more videos coming up next week. I'll be at MWC in Spain. So I'll have first looks on the Huawei P30, probably the Huawei folding phone, and a bunch of other phones from like Vivo, Xiaomi, LG. So stay tuned if you want to keep track of all of those. Thanks for watching.